Hi friends, I am so glad you decided to join me today. There are some important things going on in the world right now, and I think we should talk about them. Our lesson today is going to look a little different than usual, and I would like to read a book with you. Afterwards, we can talk about how we feel and what we can do with those feelings. So sit tight, and let's get reading. Today, I will be reading you a story called Something Happened in Our Town, a child's story about racial injustice by Marianne Celano, Marietta Collins, and Anne Hazard, illustrated by Jennifer Zavoin. Something bad happened in our town. The news was on the TV, the radio, and the internet. The grown-ups didn't think the kids knew about it, but the kids in Miss Garcia's class heard some older kids talking about it, and they had questions. After school, Emma asked her mother, why did the police shoot that man? It was a mistake, said her mother. I feel sad for the man and his family. Yes, the police thought he had a gun, said her father. It wasn't a mistake, said her sister, Liz. The cops shot him because he was black. Emma was confused. He is brown, not black, she said. Some black people have dark brown skin, and some have light brown skin, Emma's father explained. Black usually means African American. Most of their ancestors were brought here from Africa as slaves. I know what a slave is, said Emma. That's when you have to do whatever the other person says. Yes, slaves had to do whatever white people told them to do. Even after slavery ended, white people didn't let black people live where they wanted, go to school with white people, or vote. Who are white people? White people came here from places in Europe, or Russia, or other countries. We are white even though our skin is light tan. Did our family do those bad things a long time ago? Asked Emma. Yes, answered her mother. Back then, many white people thought they were better than black people, even though it wasn't true. Liz added, some white people still think most black men and boys are dangerous, even though they're not. Was the man that got shot dangerous? Asked Emma. No, her mother said. Shooting him was a mistake. It was a mistake that is part of a pattern. Like the pattern on my blanket? Emma asked. Yes, but this pattern is being nice to white people and mean to black people. It's an unfair pattern. Suppose you had a birthday party and invited everyone in your class except the black kids, her mother said. How would the black kids feel? They would be sad, Emma said. Or mad. And you would be missing out because you never know who's going to be your best friend, said Liz. And you can help others to be fair, said her mother. Like telling Anna to stop teasing Ling about her name, asked Emma. Her mother gave her a hug. Yes, just like that. In another house, Josh asked his mother, can police go to jail? Yes, said his mother. Why do you ask? That white policeman who shot the black man, said Josh, will he go to jail? What he did was wrong, said his mother. But he won't go to jail, said his father. Why not, asked Josh. Cops stick up for each other, said Josh's brother Malcolm, and they don't like black men. Josh was confused. Why not? Some police are black. You're right, said his mother. Uncle James is a police officer, and so is my friend Kenya. There are many cops, black and white, who make good choices, said his father, but we can't always count on them to do what's right. Malcolm added, I could get stopped by the police just because I'm black, even if I don't do anything wrong. That's not fair. Josh said. What if it was a white man in the car? Would the police have shot him? They probably wouldn't have even stopped the car, said his father. Sometimes white people are treated better than black people, said his mother. But it's not right. Everybody should be treated fairly. Josh's mother gave him a hug. We are proud of who we are. Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King Jr., and Nelson Mandela were strong and brave black leaders. They showed us that we can stand up for our rights and set good examples for others. They were treated unfairly, but helped others learn to be more fair. Some people haven't learned yet, said his father angrily. Why are you mad? asked Josh. I'm mad that we're still treated poorly sometimes, but I can use my anger to make things better, said his father. Black people have a lot of power if we work together to make changes. I have power, Josh said, and I'm smart. His father smiled. You're right. His mother added, and you can change people's hearts by sticking up for someone who is not treated fairly. 
Like how Malcolm sticks up for me when the kids tease me about my glasses? Josh asked, and he tells them to step off. Just like that, his parents said. The next day, a new kid joined Emma and Josh's class. His name was Omad, and he was from a country far away. Omad didn't know where to sit or what to do because it was his first day in school. He talked a little bit, but it was hard to understand him. He said he was learning English. After lunch, the class went outside to play soccer. Daniel and Sophia picked kids to be on their teams. All of the kids were picked to be on a team, except Omad. Daniel said Omad probably didn't know how to play because he was new. Sophia said Omad might not be good at soccer. Josh remembered what his mother said about sticking up for people who are treated unfairly. Emma remembered what her mother said about unfair patterns and birthday parties. All of a sudden, Omad wasn't alone. Emma and Josh were leading him to their team. We have enough kids on our team, Daniel said. We don't need him. But Josh was ready. Step off, he said. He's playing. Yeah, said Emma. We don't want to miss out. And just like that, Emma and Josh gained a new friend and started a better pattern in their school. How did that story make you feel? What are some thoughts or questions that you might have as we read the story? I'd like you to pause and reflect, take a couple moments to think about it. As you might know, across all 50 states, people are protesting for the equity and the equality of black lives. This week, I won't be teaching you an art tutorial. Instead, I would like you to use your creativity to express how you can commit to being the change you wish to see in the world. Draw or paint a picture, make a sculpture out of found objects, something that you can do to express your commitment to breaking the pattern, just like we saw in the best leader Nelson Mandela said, you can start changing the world for the better daily, no matter how small the action. I look forward to seeing what you guys create. And until next time, take care. Thank you, Ms. Crooks, for sharing that very important story with all of us. Back in January at Spanaway Elementary, we learned a protest song called We Shall Overcome while we were preparing for our Martin Luther King Day assembly. The song We Shall Overcome has been a protest song sung by people around the world who are out protesting for equality for all people. And so I'd like to sing that song again with you now. If you don't remember it, don't worry, the words are gonna be on the screen. Let's sing together. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe. We hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do be. We shall overcome. 
We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do Keep singing, Jaguars. <laughs>